Let's talk about male emotions. Let's talk about males who act feminine. Now, don't get don't get it twisted. Just because a man has emotions, emotions in and of themselves are not bad. Emotions need to be regulated though. Men's emotions need to be regulated. So don't let somebody gaslight you and say, oh, you're emotional, therefore you're feminine or whatever. Just because you're emotional does not necessarily mean you're feminine per se. It depends on what you do with those emotions, how you're emotional, in what ways are you emotional. It does matter. that in, in this aspect, the devil's in the details. I never would want to tell a guy to not be emotional because emotions are, can be and are a very positive thing in the right context. However, there is masculine emotion and there's feminine emotion, okay? It depends on the context. It depends on how the emotions are regulated. It depends on how the emotion, the emotions are expressed, particularly how they're expressed. Okay, so don't let somebody gaslight you into thinking that just because you're emotional or just because you're are reacting in an emotional way per se does not that does not necessarily mean that you are feminine, right? So what are feminine emotions, right? Well, this is a tough one because in our society, in our day and age, um, we're a lot of us are raised by women. A lot of us have virtually 90, 80, 90% uh, female teachers in school, right? So many men in, in since like the 1970s and 80s when divorce skyrocketed and it became a normalized thing, they literally normalized divorce. Th uh, you know, you know, thanks to second wave feminism, they they made you know, there was like it was like a celebrated thing. Oh, we can divorce our men now. Like what a horrible thing, right? But that's what happened in the 70s and 80s, right? Divorce skyrocketed, women started sleeping around and they started getting this in their heads that they could run society and men Men were the enemy, right? So since that happened, and that did happen, not arguable, right? Since that happened, um, women have been trying to enforce their kind of social power, right? Their kind of um, social influence, their, the, uh, their power over society in any way they can. And a lot of what they've done is they have pigeonholed um, parenting. They have tried, it's, it's this, oh, you can do everything a man can do. You can raise a kid without a man. You don't need a man, right? You don't need a man. You're, you're just as strong as a man. You don't need a man. Like what a lie, right? That, but it's a horrible lie, but that's what happens. So, so many men in today's young men and men in their you know, millennials are getting older, right? We're, we're now in our 30s and 40s, okay? Gen X is, is, is entering um, old age, right? 50s, 60s, Gen X. Baby boomers are 70s and 80s now, right? Time is, it never stops. Time is, you know, blasting on, right? So we now live in a society that is really middle-aged people, the millennials now are pretty much middle-aged. A lot of us come from a female gynocentric driven society. So we, we don't even know, a, a lot of us don't even know what's proper masculinity, right? And even, even the insidiousness of, and I've seen this a lot where the mother, even though she relies on the man, uh, the father, and she and she, um, you know, settled down with the guy because he's a good provider, whatever, whatever. They will duplicitously lean on the man for finances and resources, and yet go, and yet in kind of underhanded way, go around and sort of brainwash their children into being feminists, which is a mind fuck. But it's it's it. It really happens, okay? It really happens. They will, and, and and we talk about this a lot in the red pill manosphere where it's the double standard of women saying, I want a traditional man, 
in the sense of resources, providing resources, giving me a foundation of providership, right? He needs to be a traditional man where, you know, he's, he works hard, raises good kids, is disciplined, that they want that traditional man, yet they themselves are not traditional, right? And this is the duplicitousness of, of, of modern females and modern feminism is that they will use a man, but they will not submit to a man. They will not be traditional females. Traditional females were homemakers and, and they submitted to the, they were submissive to their man. So women want the best of both worlds. They want that docile provider. And this is why we say alpha fucks beta bucks. Alpha gets to sleep with her in, in her 20s and then when she's ready to settle down, she, she goes and gets the beta guy. Well, real men, quality men, see through that. And this is why we're walking away. This is why quality men don't want to settle down anymore because we see through that crap. These women are not traditional anymore. They're not wholesome, right? It's arguable if they ever were, but we had a culture at one point in, in which they're trying to demonize now and say, oh, it was a racist, white, patriarchal culture, blah, blah, all the shit that they're saying about it. At one point, people were moral. There were standards there was ethical moral standards in relationships now it's arguable how many people were really ethical moral well we had a society that's actually stigmatized being a slut right it's it was it was horrible to, to have a baby out of wedlock now it's nothing now it's like oh it's tuesday no one cares now back then it was it, uh you know my mother's generation my mother's a baby boomer she used to tell me that when young girls got pregnant they would leave school for like two weeks, say they were going on vacation, go have an abortion, and then come back two weeks later like nothing happened when they would get pregnant because it was that frowned upon. It was that stigmatized that they they were so ashamed of it that they would lie, act like they would go on vacation, go get an abortion, right? So we live in a different time. We live in a different time. And so many men today are have beta energy, feminine energy. And, and when I say beta energy, it's really just feminine because men are alpha, women are beta, kind of. Like if you if you can there's really no such thing as an alpha female, right? Nobody likes alpha females. Why? Because men want submissive women. If you're attracted to an alpha female, it kind of means you're a cuck. It kind of means that you're probably a codependent type personality. She's a narcissist, which is what most quote unquote alpha females really are. They're just narcissists, right? That that is those are not attractive, you know. It's like, okay, if if you're ambitious, whatever, but what they're teaching women today to be strong, independent, ambitious career driven, those are not attractive traits for men. Men are not attracted to that, okay? So if you're if you're an alpha female, probably you're just kind of a modern age woman who thinks she's a bad bitch, who thinks she's all ambitious, blah, 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 when in reality, you just, you just kind of got a lot of traits that men aren't attracted to, right? If you're attracted to that kind of woman, it says a lot about you. You're probably beta. Meaning you have feminine energy, right? So really, m masculinity should be considered alpha because masculinity is naturally attractive and it's naturally a leadership quality, okay? Femininity is naturally attractive as in, uh, insofar as it is feminine, insofar as it is submissive, right? That is feminine energy. Women submit to a strong male. Women are attracted to a strong male. That's how it's supposed to be. But because of, you know, this whole Marxism, this whole, which is just subversive propaganda, right? To really ruin marriages, right? The roles have been, have been bastardized. The, uh, that's probably not the right word. The roles have been conflated, right? We don't know if, if if men are women or men are women. Be, uh, we don't know if men are women or women are men anymore. We don't know because we don't even know what's masculine anymore. That's how if I would you know you got to give them credit in feminism. It's, it was effective. They effectively 
attacked masculinity and to a good degree they have beaten it into into submission and we don't even know we don't even remember what's what what's strong and masculine anymore um for the most part now every once in a while you'll meet somebody who's who's very masculine and it's like okay well that you know that's a reminder that guy's really masculine that's that's what it means right it's not being a tyrant certainly not it's it's being strong being gentle soft in this sense you know soft in the sense that you are humble soft in the sense that you're doing the right thing you're 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 not judgmental or attacking right anybody but you are steadfast in your masculinity. A lot of the a lot of men today are running around and they don't even realize that they're they're not masculine. Right? They they have beta female characteristics and when I say beta in this context, I mean characteristics that women have because women really are you know there's something within them that wants to be submissive to a strong male leader right men today instead of leading themselves are looking for a, for a leader to lead them right that's feminine right you create your own aura you create your own masculinity right it's not to say you you can't cooperate with other men because that there's nothing beta about cooperation Alphas cooperate, right? And then also, uh, on a side note, there's something that is really damaging, which is actually beta in disguise, which is trying to be the alpha. Guys who try to be the alpha, they're actually the most beta guys, right? If you try to be the alpha, you try to amog other guys, you try to be the leader of your of your group or whatever, whatever, that is actually beta energy, right? That That's actually feminine. And it's a learned feminine behavior because actually even women, it's a learned female behavior from radical feminism. That's who teaches women to compete with men. Radical feminism, that's where it comes from. Radical feminism teaches women to compete with men. Go look at its history, it always has. It's attacked mascu- it's, it's attacked masculinity in and of itself. It's certainly attacked the the male leadership role as father of the household. 100% it's attacked that, right? And women are now competing with men not only in the workforce f- for resources and, and finances and good jobs and careers. They're competing with men socially. They're trying to. Um, socially beat men and women are very clever you got to give it to them they're very deceptive and we think a lot of their deception comes in their subtlety because we think as men we think oh this is just a woman like you know she's just this or that or, you know right that's what we think but we don't realize that emotionally psychologically they could do a lot of damage to men in general not only that these women are raising our kids they're raising our young men we got to consider that right well hold on a minute these women are being influenced massively by radical feminism, which is basically man hate and female supremacy, right? And then they're raising our children with those ideals. So she's she's not raising a child to be masculine. She's not treat uh, r- uh, raising the child up to be a strong male leader. She is giving. Uh, she's teaching him female emotions she's teaching him how to deal with things from a from a female perspective how do females do things how do females right and it's not even normal females it's not even like normal submissive it's it's radicalized females right uh competitive females females who are low-key supremacists low-key hate men Right, so it's no wonder so many of our, our our men are turning gay. It's no wonder so many of our men are leftist, right? Uh, liberals, right? Neoliberal, whatever you want to call it. it's all the same thing, really. They just they hate traditional values. They hate morals. Like nobody puts God first. It's masculine as hell to put God first. Real men follow God. <laughs> I've never met an, an I've rarely meet atheists 
mostly they're agnostic and and they they probably are agnostic and think that they're atheist but they're agnostic if you're an atheist you're you're just not masculine because how can you know how can you know oh, i know there's no god right it's like i respect agnostics at least agnostics are like well maybe i don't know there's no evidence like at least they're being rational about it how could you say i know there's no god right that is that's beta that's feminine energy because you don't know why because some science teacher told you because some because some old bearded guy who was illuminati if you look it up right named darwin with a long beard uh told you that, that that we came from fish or we came from monkeys whatever right come on now so so much of our society is beta eyes right now let's get into let's get into some of the characteristics of a beta feminine type of man right first of all betas beta men they're always challenging other men right always challenging I'll tell you one of the most alpha traits that most people overlook is being comfortable with who you are. It's alpha as fuck to be secure with who you are. It's alpha as fuck to be comfortable in your own skin. It's alpha as fuck to be, to have self-esteem, to be secure to the point where you don't feel you have to um, challenge anyone, right? You're secure in your own skin, right? Beta men are always challenging other men. They're always challenging, um, you know, particularly men in leadership, particularly men who have really good qualities. If you're a man who has a, who's, who's secure, that intimidates men who aren't secure. If you're a man who has confidence, that intimidates men who don't have confidence, right? Which is, fuck, okay, listen, that is beta, that is feminine, because women fight with other women, right? Why are women fighting with other women? Because they're competing for the highest quality man. Men should not compete with other men for women. That is a shame, that's shameful, that's beta. Men compete with themselves, and they compete with their environment. And if if men in your environment are competing with you, just know, I mean, that happens. And that is just a, cor- a, 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 a course, a, a thing of life. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a probability in life. That's going to happen. But just know that if those guys are competing with you, they're not secure in themselves. Now, it's one thing to compete with somebody for a job. That's that's natural competition. Like, okay, there, there, there's, there, there's five people going for this same career. I need to beat these guys out. I need to show the boss that I'm better than these guys. That's normal. That's natural. But if a guy is attacking you personally, like say you're out at the club and guys challenge you like, hey man, want to fight or some stupid, like that is beta. That's not alpha. That's not what men do. Men do not attack other men. Men do not challenge other men. Men do not try to fight other men. Men do, real men, alpha men do not do these things. They don't, uh, challenge or um, ridicule, criticize other men. That's not an alpha trait, right? And we all do it to some degree like, oh, you know, that you know, we're, 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 you know, we're watching a sports game and the guy m- misses the shot. And, oh, what an asshole. Or like, oh, yeah. We, you know, we find ourselves doing that, but that's not really quite what I'm talking about. But even that to some degree, like if you're just First of all, like if you're watching other men succeed, like, I mean, you know, it's entertainment, but to some degree, if you're super into sports, that's kind of beta, right? It's kind of beta. Like, like you can enjoy a sport and say, this is great. This is, but if you're so into it that you're just like consumed by it, like live your life. Don't watch somebody else live their life, right? Don't sit around and, oh, I gotta, I gotta watch this guy live his life and, and cheer for him or whatever, right? So testing, challenging, criticizing, fighting with other men, that's feminine energy. That's beta energy. What's an, what's other beta energies? Uh, being unsure of yourself, right? Or how about this? Trying to uh, be, be angry at, you know, other men. Trying to make other men jealous or try or like, say a guy 
uh, you know, cancels on you. One of your friends can't, oh, you know what, I can't make it or something like that. And you get all upset and you're all in your emotions because you really wanted to go hang out or whatever and the guy canceled on you, right? That's that's low-key beta. That, that That's low-key... Uh, fi- that's low-key feminine. That's what women do. Women are angry and, and they'll try to punish you if you cancel plans with them. Oh, I'm, I'm so special. How can you cancel plans with me? How can you do... And it's like, you know, to some degree... Maybe we've been there. I, I don't know. You know, it's like you, we, ha, we, we exhibit this type of behavior sometimes in our life and we don't even realize it, that we're being beta, we're being feminine because so much in our society is gynocentric. So much of, you know, in our society is feminized. We don't even realize we're doing these things. It's subconscious. Oh man, you know, I want to do something today. Uh, you know, this guy canceled plans with me and I'm all mad. It's like, nah, man, okay, he canceled plans. Now you go... And you do something else you were gonna do. Well, you got books, right? Okay, I'm gonna go read these books, or I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, uh, you know, do some push-ups. Or like, I just, it's all mind state. If it, okay, you you wanted to hang out with your friend, but he canceled. You wanted to go do this this cool thing, but he canceled. Instead of being all pouty about it and emotional and trying to punish him or whatever, you just okay. I got something else that I got, you know I gotta go do. I can nice. Now this frees up my time. I can I can go hit the gym. Nice. Now I can go get some gains. Like. That's masculine. It's masculine, man, to not react emotionally, right? It, at least not react emotionally with negative emotions, pouty emotions, like feel sorry for yourself emotions or, or vengeful emotions. Sometimes vengeance might be necessary. Depends on the, how bad you got screwed over. But if it's something small like that, anyway, I'm not advocating for revenge, but sometimes, I mean, life, life is full of a lot of hills and valleys right so sometimes you can (laughs) you know like it depends like you know i don't know sometimes you might you might have to go to war but um most of the time no most of the time you just you know real men take losses this is something else we we've lost in our gynocentric society real men take losses it's part of being a man you take loss like here's the thing man you miss 100% uh, 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 100% of the shots you don't take, right? You might shoot 50 free throws and you might make 40 of them. That's pretty good. That's 90%. That's that's high quality shots right there. 90% of the free throws you took, you made. That's a really good percentage. Guess what? You missed 10, right? What are you going to do if if you miss five of those in the first 20? You oh man, I already missed five. I'm going to quit. I already missed five like it's masculine to get back up on the horse and keep riding. Get back up. That's masculine. Here's the thing. Again, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So a lot of times what guys do is they don't even try because they don't want to fail. Failure is a positive thing. Failure is a positive thing. When you fail, it shows that you need improvement. It shows that you... But, but here's, here, here's the number one thing that failure shows. You tried. Right. If you gave it your all and you failed, you, you tried. That's masculine. People think people equate alpha with success. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Success in and of itself does not make a man alpha. Right. And that's another thing that we've really that's really warped in our society today. We think people who are successful are, are the alphas, and that's that's a warped way to look at it. No. An alpha is the man who can try, fail, not cry about it, keep trying, and then succeed, right? Or just keep trying, and if you keep failing, hey, you, at least you try. You're still trying, right? Or you got, or, or, or you got something else. You say, oh, you know what? I tried in this area. Now I'm going to go to this other area because maybe that's not the area for me, right? There's nothing wrong with that, man. A lot of people today, they... They think, oh, you tried and you failed, so therefore you're a loser. Like, no. No, the loser's the one who doesn't try. Or the loser's the one who sits on the sidelines and watches the other guys try. The only loser is when you're not in the game game taking those shots. That's when you're a loser, right? Or or, or worse, you're, you're a bigger loser if you're criticizing the guys who are in the game, right? You're, 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 you're criticizing the guys who tried and failed. Oh, haha, you're, you know, you're a failure, blah, blah. 
and then you're you're or, or you're riding the jock of the guy who won, right? You criticize the losers, and then you ride the jock of the guy who won. This is what I call like the LeBron effect, right? This is the this is the LeBron effect. Everybody loves LeBron because he's he's number one. He he's the winner. Woo woo, right? But what about the guys who? really have more character than LeBron? What about the guys who play better defense? What about the guys who are passing better, right? We overlook that shit. We overlook the, 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 the wholesome character and we always look at the winners. Like that's a, that's, a sick, that, that's a sign of sickness, right? That's also part of our masculinity being um, de, uh, destabilized, right? When we pedestalize only winners and we overlook guys who have quality character. We, 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 we pedestalize the guy who's scoring all the points, but we ignore the guy who's getting all the rebounds because rebounds equate to points. People don't realize that. Or defense, that equates to points. Because if you if you get rebounds, that means you have possession of the ball. If you get rebounds, that or excuse me, if, if you have good defense, that means you stop the other team from scoring those two points. Therefore, it gives your team the chance to score score more points. You see, but we totally overlook all of that. We overlook the Dennis Rodmans, right? We overlook the Scottie Pippins, and we always glom on to the LeBron J Jameses and the Michael Jordans. Not to say those guys aren't great at scoring, but that's not all that basketball is about, you see, and it's the same with life. We might look at this guy, and, oh, he's got a million billion dollars, he's so great, maybe, but he might also be an asshole, he might also be mean to his friends, bad to his mom, neglectful to his children, you see. There might be another guy who, who doesn't have a million billion dollars, but he's a hard worker and he's respectful to everyone in his neighborhood. He's a, he's a good neighbor. He's kind to his family, you see? We overlook that kind of stuff. And some women are, are smart enough to see that, right? They're not just out here chasing the guys who uh, have a million billion dollars and are flying around in jets because those guys, are the, you know, they're not gonna love them. They're, they're just gonna use them, right? Some, some women are, you know, you know, eventually wise up doesn't mean they're not manipulative doesn't mean that they don't have a bunch of baggage right but they might settle down for for a quality guy like that maybe he might be quality or he might just be a sucker and right <laughs> be beta bucks and not even realize he's beta bucks right this is why men have to learn you know to vet men have to learn to you know how to have abundance and not be in that in that uh, scarcity mindset, so that you're you're just taking anything that comes along, and no, no, you know, and no matter how used good she is, you're just going to take her because she's all you can get, right? Well, unfortunately, that's that's the kind of society you know in dating that women are, are you know, are giving us in today's day and age. But what we can do is we can stop being less beta. We can stop being excuse me, we can stop being so beta and we can be less beta, we can be less feminine, we can have higher standards, we can have higher quality requirements and the type of women we want, the type of relationships we chase, and even our friendships, right? Show me a guy who's got tons and tons of friends and I'll show you a guy who's got a ton of, 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 of fair weather friends, a ton of acquaintances. I'll show you a guy who probably is just going along to get along, right? He doesn't stand for anything. He doesn't have a high quality character, right? Guys who are on their, you know, on their ones, they're, they're, they roll mostly solo. Those are the realest guys you'll meet because a lot of times, nine times out of 10, they're not, they don't have flimsy characters because guys with flimsy characters tend to run in groups and they tend to have this group think, right? Group think is toxic. Group think is feminine. Women are, 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 are groupthink 101. Oh, what do my friends think? I can't, you know, I want to sleep with this guy, but what do my friends think? I want to date this guy, but what do my friends and family think? I want to go this way, but what is my friend? Like, that's how women are. And, and I wouldn't even say that's a, that's a quality, you know, female trait. It's not. I like really independent women, women who can make their own choices. Women say they're independent. Oh, I'm independent. What they really mean is that they're not relying on a man, right? But they might still be relying on their friends for advice and what to do. See, women say they're independent, but yet, 
they do something totally different. They say, oh, I'm independent, woo woo, but you're not actually even making your own independent decisions. You're going to your your sister and your, and your best friend since high school and your mom and, and all these other people so you can get advice on how to deal with this guy and he's not showing me enough attention. Do I dump him? And, uh, all, and you're getting all these opinions for people who don't even know the guy, don't even really know the situation. You see, groupthink is feminine. If guys are in a group think, like that's that's another thing that's feminine. Group think. I learned that lesson when I in my early 20s. Don't 